Lord has made, we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Amen. But this is a new day that he's allowed us to see. Amen. And we just want to let him know we're thankful and we're grateful, God. Let us pray. Our most gracious and heavenly Father, we come this morning, Lord, with thanksgiving in our hearts, Lord. Praise on our lips, O oh God, lifting you up this morning. God, for you are so worthy to be praised, God. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to see a new day, God, that we've never seen before, God. Somebody somewhere didn't wake up this morning, but we made the wake up list, God, and we thank yes, you for that, Lord. God. God, we just honor your presence in this place, O oh God. Because you said in your word, but two or three are gathered, God. And we got more than two or three this morning. That being on one accord, Lord God, that you would be in the midst, oh God. So, Lord, we know you, your presence is here, God, and we thank you. Lord, we thank you for gracing us with your presence on this day, God. And, Lord, we just want to do what, what's going to be pleasing in your sight on today, Lord. Whatever we say, whatever we do, Lord, you're going to get the glory, God. Because you deserve the glory. So, God, we just invite you to have your way. Saturate this place with your anointing, God. Because your anointing destroys and breaks yokes, oh God. Your, Lord, your, your anointing, oh God, it sets us free, oh God. So, Lord, we just want to be free today to praise you, to honor you, Lord, and to give you glory, God. You are so worthy, God. I can't thank you enough for all your goodness and your mercy, oh God. Lord, we just thank you. Have your way in this place, God. Move on the man of God today, God. Bless the God. I know he has a word from on high, oh God. Give us listening ears and receptive hearts to hear what your word has to say on today. We bless you, we honor you, we give you praise. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's read our praise team.
because we're safe in his arms. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can't nobody hold me like he can. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus.
Whatever you have in your hand, I want you to put it down to the side. And what I want you to do, I want you to hug yourself. Hey, 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 hey. Because the way you feel now, you're feeling safe this morning. Because you're in the house of the Lord this morning, you're feeling safe. Because how you feel now is how you feel in God's arms.
your heart. Let them see your heart. Come on and open up your heart to him right now. Come on and open up your heart to him right now. Because I believe whatever you need from God is in this place right now. Has anybody made up in their mind that they're not going to leave this place the way that they came? I dare you to throw your head back and say, I won't go back. I won't go back home to the way I left it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Touch our minds and our hearts right now. 
God, matter of fact, God, we just don't want to keep it to ourselves. But God, the folks that we're connected to may not be in the same location where we are. But God, touch their minds wherever they may be. Touch their hearts wherever they may be. God, even in our foolishness, you still protect us, oh God. And God, we simply say thank you for that right now. We ask you to allow the Holy Spirit to run rampant in this place. God, we ask you right now to just run up and down each and every aisle right now. Allow the Holy Spirit to touch each and every seat right now. And God, we are so not selfish because we want you to also transmit to streams right now and go to Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and all of our social media right now, God. That wherever somebody is right now, that they turn their home into a tabernacle right now, God. They turn their home into a sanctuary right now, God. Matter of fact, let the person on the other side of the screen make so much noise that they wake the house up because of their praise right now. And God, we ain't too crazy to let you know that we shouldn't even be here today ourselves. We should have got cut off. We could have got cut off. But God, you saw fit to keep us yet another day. And we give you glory and honor, Lord. In Jesus' name we do pray. And every heart said amen. 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 Come on and give God a hand of praise right now. Come on, if you're going to receive something, come on. If you're expecting something, come on and give God a praise. Come on, if you're expecting something, come on and give God a praise. That when you open your eyes this morning, you say, I need a word this morning, Lord. I don't know what I'm going to do. I need a word this morning. I need a word this morning, Lord. You didn't hit the snooze button on the clock this morning. You said, Lord, I need a word this morning. And you didn't care if nobody came to church with you this morning. You left some people at the house. And you said, I got to go because I need a word. Is there anybody who said, y'all just stay here if you want to? I'm going because I need a word. Is there anybody need a word from the Lord this morning? Is there anybody need a word from the word of Lord this morning? That you made up in your mind, if you don't come with me, I'm going to take the word back home with me. Because I'm going to change the atmosphere in which I live in. I'm going to change the atmosphere in which I work in. God is so good. God is so good. You have your Bible. You have your Bibles. I need you to turn with me to Matthew the 11th chapter. Matthew the 11th chapter and the 28th through the 30th verse. And if you're reading it from your phone, I need you to go to the Message Bible with me today. I, I may read this more than one time because I need y'all to I need y'all to get it. You got Matthew 11 28 to 30. If you got to say I got it. You still looking say help Lord. Listen what it says. Are you tired? Worn out, burned out on religion. Listen what he says. Come to me. Get away with me. And you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take real rest. Walk with me. Work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythm of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitted on you. Keep company with me. And you will learn to live freely and lightly. Can, 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 I, can I read that one more time, y'all? Can, can I read that one more time, y'all? Can, can I read that for somebody? It, 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 it. One more time. Yeah. 
See y'all, uh, what messed me up was when I first read it, 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 I, 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 when I first read it, when I first read it. I, it, it, it seems like it spoke to me. I don't know if it spoke to anybody else. But it seemed like it spoke to me. So, so, so can I take my time? Are you tired? Worn out? Look at what he does, the first, the first three questions he asks. He takes it to another level every time. And so God says, I'm not just going to talk to the tired people. But I want to talk to the wore out people. And I don't want to just talk to the wore out people, but I need to talk to the burned out people. <laughs> what I like about God is that before he really enters a relationship with you, he already know what level you on. Oh my God. He ain't trying to figure you out already. And so what God says, hold on, I ain't just talking to tired people because the worn out people may think I'm not talking to them. And I'm not just talking to the tired and the worn out people, but I need to burn out. Can I talk about burnout for a minute? Burnout is to the point like when you got a car that's on gas and you go beyond your reserve tank and you know you really need to get some and your car simply pulls to stop. Oh my God, your car don't even, see when you burn out, you don't even get polite. Your car, if it's at the point where it's gone beyond the reserve tank, it does not matter if you're on the freeway, it does not matter if you're on a street or one way, when that car runs out, it simply just stops. There are some of us who have gone past the reserve tanks. There are some of us who've gone past some things. And we're in the busy things of life. And all of a sudden, you just stop. And God wants you to know that I see the ones who just, that anybody in the house that just stop in the middle. People are passing you by. They blowing their horns at you. They looking at you like you done lost your mind. And they don't understand. You ain't got enough to go on that over. You can sit in your car with your hands on the wheel and tell I'm burned out, I'm burned out, I'm burned out. I can't go on if I could go on. Take the music down just a little bit. Don't stop, but just take it down for a minute. I need to talk to my burnout folks for a moment. Oh my God, give yeah. This is the person, this is the person I'm talking to. I, I, I don't know if I'm talking to you, but listen to me. This is the burned out person. Y'all look at your name and say, this is the burned out person. Here you are. Here you are. In the vehicle that you're in. And people are telling you, go on and move. And you're still sitting where you broke down at, where you're burnt out at. And you, they got the audacity to tell you to move. Why are you stopping? And you want to let them know, I would go, but I just can't go. Oh, my God. I would move, but I just can't move. I would go faster, but I can't go faster. I'm running. I have ran out of something. Here you are. People are going their speed, and you stuck on the highway called life. You say sanctified Holy Ghost feel and five bell time but you stuck he says I like it because look what he says he said if you're tired that's a feeling you're worn out. That's an emotion. But burnout is a relationship. How do I know? How do I know? How do I know? Because he says, Oh, you burned out on religion. Are you burned out with religion? Yes, 
And you want to understand why the church is not full every Sunday is because people are burned out with religion. People are burned out with people telling me how to live when they live in the way they want to live. People telling me I should go when they don't go. People are telling me a, they can quote scriptures from Genesis to Revelations, but they ain't living a dime worth of nothing. We got titles, positions, and you want to tell somebody else how to do it when well, you're not doing it yourself. And there are a lot of folks mad with God because they put their trust in humanity. And they burned up because what they saying is, oh, oh my God, yesterday, yesterday, yesterday was an eye-opener for me, y'all, 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 y'all gonna sit down, y'all gonna sit down, I know I'm talking to you, but I want y'all to sit down, yesterday was an eye-opener for me. Uh, there was a young lady who got up yesterday at a funeral inside church and, 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 and she said a couple of cuss, cuss words in church, in the pulpit. Everybody in the church said, woo! And the girl, I like it because she straightened everybody out. She said, don't woo yourself at me. She said, because just because you sitting in that pew and in this pulpit, it ain't like none of y'all ain't cussed before. She said, like y'all ain't cussed before. And she said, before you judge me, while I'm walking in somewhere, y'all just walking out or I didn't get to see you. And what has happened is, it's so easy for us to tell people what you're doing wrong. As long as I point my finger at you, I'm taking the attention off of me. Yeah. And what I like about Jesus is saying is, I'm talking to the ones who are going, who are tired, who are worn out, but also burnt out with just this thing called religion. Let me help y'all, let me help y'all. You may never ever heard a preacher tell you this, but religion ain't going to get you into heaven. Ain't gonna get you now, 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 now. Let me help those other folks. I'm gonna help two sets of people. You got two sets of people that I'm talking to today. You got two sets of people saying, You ain't got to come to church. Uh, just, 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 just know the Lord. But you got to know the Lord to come to church. If you want to know the Lord, you got to know. If you want to know the Lord, you got to come to church so you can be introduced to the Lord. I don't need you just come to church and say, I checked the box or I was in church 52 Sundays a year. A plaque ain't going to get you into heaven. It is your relationship. And if you got the right relationship, it should be something on the inside of you that pulls you to church. When you're in a relationship with somebody, there are things that pulls you to that person that you do for that person because you're in a relationship with that person. Isn't it strange that we'll take a person out to eat, we'll be intimate with a person, we'll buy a person thing because we're in a relationship with them. But the problem is we don't want a relationship with God. We want religion with God because religion say I can just come when I want to. But when you got a relationship with God, it is something pulling you to God because you're interested in doing it with him. Yeah. Come on now. Come on now. I ain't even okay. So let me, y'all just can I read? Can I read it? And I so I can give y'all the topic of my text. Can please? Can I read it? Y'all ready? Here we go. Twenty-eight message Bible says, "Are you tired? Are you worn out? Burned out on religion? Come to me." Get away with me, and you will recover. Your life. I'll show you how to take real risks. Walk with me. Work with me. Watch how I do it. I like that part. Oh, okay, okay, I got to keep reading because I'm about to blow up. It's so much. Learn the unforced rhythm of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitted on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. When the time is mine, I want to preach on the topic, I surrender. I surrender. There are things in our lives that we feel that will make us become less of a person when we do something. 
surrendering really means to give one self. Even when you look up surrender in the Bible or try to find the word surrender in the Bible, it is literally countries surrendering themselves to a greater country or a nation. But when we talk about this particular surrender in which I tend to lift up to you today, I'm now lifting up where Paul says in Romans where he says, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. That means that you are willing to render yourself, your ism, your schism, what your mama taught you, what your daddy taught you, what the streets taught you, what your boo taught you, what all these folk taught you. You're willing to give that up and get closer to God, which means that when somebody pushes your button, you ain't got to react the way you used to because now, because you surrender, you put the outer order button on that particular part of your life. And so when we surrender to God, we must we say to God that I'm allowing you now to drive. I'm allowing you to drive. I'm trusting you, oh God, that you will lead me to these things. And so God is saying that Jesus is saying in this text because when he's here in Matthew the 11, he, Jesus realized the reason why Jesus came is because there's been such a huge divide between God and humanity. That Jesus come to save humanity because when you take the time to understand that when, uh, when, when Adam sins in the garden, there became a split between humanity and God. And Jesus comes to redeem us that we now get back in the place where we should have been before. And Jesus understands that the law was so hard during that time. And people were trying to figure out how can I get a relationship with God? Does it matter my economic status? Does it matter what side of town I'm from? Does it matter where I am in my life? Am I struggling with addiction? Am I struggling with all these different things? God don't want me. God does not love me. How do I fit in this religious thing? Because when I come in the church with tennis shoes on people look at me like I'm crazy when, when I come to church with purple hair people look at me like I'm crazy when I come to church with tattoos people look at me like I'm crazy and it feels like I get more love in the street than I do in the church even homeless people share a blanket but church folk don't want to share a seat that's next to them Even alcoholics wipe the top of the bottle off. But we don't even want to share communion with somebody. Even they speak to each other. We come into the house of God and act like we ain't see nobody sitting on the left side. We just come and sit in a seat. God is not pleased. And there are some people who say, I'm tired of church. I'm worn out with church. But we've got to raise a standard. you got to have a standard wherever you go. We've got to raise a standard nowadays. You must understand we are living in the last and evil days and it appears that our standards are dropping and we're tired and we're worn out and we're burned out because we are trying to fit in this religion thing when God says I want a relationship with you. Can I break it down? Say break it down. In Genesis there were no churches. I want y'all to get this. There was no steeples. There were no pews. There were no, there were no choirs. There were no praise team. There was no ministerial staff. There was no executive board. There were no deacons. There were no trustees. But there was a relationship in the garden. And what God is trying to let you know before you have all those other things, you need to learn how to walk with me first. Because when you walk with me first, that even if the musician don't show up, you still can sing. That even if the choir director don't sing, you still can go back to a song you used to know. That even if the minister don't show up, you ought to be able to pick your Bible up and read the scripture. You know how church should go. God is saying, but if you've got a relationship with me, whatever humanity does should not hinder you. He says, you want a relationship with me? It can't be based off of what other folks 
do and don't do. Number one, when you understand, when you say I surrender, number one, we see this. Number one, Jesus recognizes the problem. He understands that there's a problem that's going on because whatever it is, it's got you tired, worn, and burned out. And what he is saying is, I'm recognizing that you have a problem. When you're in a relationship with somebody and you sit there going through all these stuff and they don't recognize something wrong with you. You walking around with your lips stuck out. You walking around like something is going on with you and the person who lives with you don't even have the time to say what's wrong with you. You're not recognizing the problem. It's amazing to me that somebody outside the house can recognize you got something going on that somebody that's inside the house. What are you thinking? You've got to understand. Jesus says, if I want a relationship with you, he says, i got to pay attention to you. I don't know Amy is today. I want y'all to get this. Come on now. Come on. That every time you get around me, your lip got to be stuck out. You got to roll your eyes. We don't have a conversation something. There's a problem here. And you've got to recognize the problem whether you want to talk about it or not. There's a problem here. Jesus recognizes that I see a generation of people who are tired and worn out. And that's why he opened the question and said, are you tired? Because first of all, what Jesus said is I need to read this relationship right. So first of all, do you just need some do you just need to take a nap? Yeah. I like that. I like that. Because the zeal you had before, oh my God. you ain't got no more. Oh the run you used to have before, you don't have anymore. Oh the way you used to witness to unbelievers, it seems to have been diluted or dumbed down some. So he said, first of all, I need to find out before I go off. On you, I need to find out. Are you tired? What I like about this, Jesus shows us a very important part of this relationship. He recognized the problem to understand. He says, I like this. Jesus says, I'm going to meet you where you are. I like that because he's saying, because if you say yes, he's going to meet you in your tiredness. I'm going to meet you when you are tired. He says, Are you tired? He's recognizing all these things. He said, are you born out? Because what he is saying to them, burn out, what he's saying is I recognize or I see something different in you. I like that. Because when you have a relationship with somebody and things have turned left, what I'm saying to you, you've got to pay attention to it. So Jesus, number one, y'all said he recognizes the problem. Number two, I like this. I like this. <laughs> he said this number in, in verse twenty-eight. He recognized the problem, but but in twenty-nine, Jesus offers a partnership. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I like it. I like, it. and the partnership he offers to them is not based upon what they did mm -hmm. or how they're feeling. Thank you, Jesus. He understands that all of us are going through some things in life. There's some of us in here who are going through. Um, um, uh, going through credit issues or bill issues. We, we, we we're struggling financially. There's some of us who are struggling emotionally. There's some of us who are struggling with, uh, with, with different things that are going on, physical things in our lives. We may be hurting right now. All of us in every seat is going through something different. But Jesus offers a partnership, says whatever I'm offering you is not based on what you're doing right now. I'm so glad Christ does not treat us, as I said in the back in our prayer, like a credit report. There are things when you don't do something on your credit report, they call it delinquencies or they call it late payment. And what it does, it takes a hit to your credit so that when you go into a bank, they look at your past history and they say, wait a minute, you got some issues going on here. We cannot help you because you had some periods where you were late. You had some periods where you didn't do this. You had some periods where you fell out. Even, you can, even if you can explain it, I still can't give you what you're asking for. We can't enter into a partnership. But I'm so glad Christ it's not like credit because even when we get delinquent, even when we don't do what we're supposed to do, even when we fall back every now and then, even when we don't pay what we're supposed to pay, even when we are late on something, we late on our praise, we late on our worship, we late on what giving God glory, we be late. And matter of fact, we wait for somebody else to run before we run. Child, when God is on the inside of you, you ought to open up strong.
somewhere like a track and say, I don't care if I'm the only one running. I don't care if I'm the only one shouting because God probably didn't do what he did for me. If you know where I came from, if you know what God did for me, he pulled some of us out of a whole house. He pulled some of us out of a crack house. He pulled some of us out of a shot house. He pulled some of us out of some other things. But when God pulled me out, he offered a partnership with me and says, I'm not worried about what you did. I'm just concerned about what you're about to do. Is there anybody in the house that can give God praise because he's offering a partnership with you? He don't care who you've been with. He don't care what you thought about, but he's offering a partnership right now. How do I know he says, come to me? What I like about that, he didn't say clean yourself up, fix your hair, get some lashes, get some nails, get a tape or a trim. He didn't say get a tailored suit. He didn't say get Armani shoes. He didn't say go and get the highest suit or a necktie. He says come to me. Is there anybody in the house that can give God praise that Jesus told you to come to me? You may have ashes on you. You may have club residue on you. But he says come to me. Is there anybody in the house glad that he gave you an invitation to come to him? What I like about it is in order for you to come, my God, let me help y'all. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Listen what he says. He didn't say, come find me. Y'all missed it. 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 He didn't say, come find me. Which means, I ain't got to go looking for him. I ain't got to go down in a valley. I ain't got to go to a mountaintop. Well, Pastor Dumas, there are songs says, even if I'm in the valley, he'll be right there. See, you're singing a song and don't know what you're missing. You're just calling some words. But when he says, come to me, that means I'm already in the vicinity because the Bible says, if you make your bed in hell, I'll be right there. If you make your bed in the highest parts, I'll be right there. So what you're saying, Pastor Dumas, is my wife didn't see me do X, Y, Z. My husband didn't see me do X, Y, Z. Church folk didn't see me do X, Y, Z. But the Lord saw everything I did and who I did it with. And he still wants me to come to him. Folks will turn their back on you. On the left and the right, they don't want nothing to do with you. Not because of what they saw, but because of what they heard. What somebody else said. But Jesus says, come to me. What Jesus does, he offers you an invitation to come see him. He offers a partnership. He said, what is partnership? He is calling us to walk. I like this. I like this. I like this. He is calling us to walk to him. He knows that we cannot live this life on our own. And what he's trying to tell you, you carry all this stuff. Can I talk to my super saved saints for a minute? We want to carry all the baggage that we got. But then, we want to carry somebody else's stuff. Here we all want to carry somebody else's stuff. And here you are, crying to the Lord, Sunday in and Sunday out. And you want to carry somebody else's stuff. And you want to carry all this stuff and carry it around because you think that you can do it by yourself. And what the Lord is trying to tell you is I want you to come to me with all the stuff you got and stop trying to be everything for everybody else and be the best you you can be. He said, because you can't live this thing called life by yourself. And what he says, I'm trying to offer you a partnership. Come here for a minute, big man. Come here, come here for a minute. What the Lord is trying to tell you is you ain't got to carry all this shit. Hold your hands up. Yeah, I'm going to let you be the Lord for a moment. Now, don't, mess, don't you mess this up. Don't you mess this up. Here you are trying to carry all this stuff. And some of us, say some of us. Don't 
don't y'all look at nobody just blink your eyes at me. Some of us, we trying to carry sister so-and-so this. We're trying to carry brother so-and-so this. Here Jesus is with his hands. Follow me with your hands open. With his hands open. And you want to carry all this stuff. Just walk with me. You want to carry everywhere you go. And tell Lord, life is so hard. Lord, why am I carrying all this? And the Lord is saying, I want a partnership with you. You ain't got to keep carrying everything you're going through. And what he says is, you ain't got to carry it. He says, come to me. He says, because I'm trying to partner with you. And what God is trying to tell you. Now, now I'm going to do something. I hope the Spirit just gave me this. I want you to take it. I just want you to hold my arm. Hold my arm right there. See, that's some of us right there. And we want to still carry stuff. And God is still gracious enough to still hold us up while we carry all this stuff. And the Lord is saying, all you got to do, all she got to do, is stop trying to carry all this stuff. Because God says, not only my desire to carry you, now hold one arm on me and hold the other arm out. Hold on. Because God is saying, when I tell you to come to me, I'm telling you to bring me all of this. Bring me all of this. Oh, I got you. And bring me all of that. And what God is trying to tell you is that if I'm going to be a partner with you, not only will I carry your stuff, but I'll carry you too. Is there anybody in the house know that the Lord will carry you? He got all your stuff and he got you too. You don't know how you made it this far, but if it had not been for the Lord holding your tire, holding your worn, holding your burnout, holding your grievous, holding your hatred, holding your backbiting, holding your lies, holding your fears, holding your tears. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, where, where, where would I be? He wants a partnership with you. I say, Lord, Give it up. Hold me. I told Big Man to hold me. He said, Hold me. Hold me. Hold me. Hold me. Late at night. Early in the morning. All day long. Say, Lord, thank you. I done messed up. I done talked to my folks. Oh my God, you ought to give God a praise because he wants a partnership with you. This is what it says. Y'all ought to give God praise because he got you. I need somebody who know the Lord got you because if it had not been for God doing what he does, you'd have lost your mind a long time. Folks asking you, how you making it since mama gone? How you making it since daddy gone? You got to tell them, the Lord told me, I got you, I got you, I got you. Is there anybody in the house that God says, just give it over to me, cast all your cares upon me. Number one, Jesus recognizes the problem. Number two, he also offers partnership. But I like this part. <laughs> From what he says, you will recover to life, period. From the B clause of 29 all the way to the A clause of 30. He recognizes the problem. 
He offers partnership, but Jesus provides a promise. Okay. Let me help you with this. He provides a promise. What do you mean? Because Jesus does not, oh my God, I hope y'all get this. Um, if those of you all who have adult children, even if they're grown, they get to a point where they see a car or something that they want. And their credit is not strong enough for them to get it. Sometimes mom and daddy's credit ain't strong enough either. But the credit is not strong enough to get it. And what they tell them is, in order for you to get this, you're going to need a cosign. Which means, by yourself, you're not strong enough. And what Jesus does, even though the disciples were with him, even though the ministers were with him, Jesus does not let them cosign on this one. Because what he says is, even if you fought on it, what cosign it is, I hope y'all get what cosign it is. Cosign it says that even if the person that you're cosigning for, even if they can't meet the obligations, what you're saying is, I'll step in and I'll take it from there. And what I like about this is, Jesus does not ask Peter, he does not ask James, he does not ask John, he don't even ask John the Baptist, he don't even go to the Old Testament and ask Adam, he don't go to the Old Testament and ask Moses, he does not ask David, he does not ask Ezekiel, but can I tell y'all something, he says, when he looked back over his life, he had prophets, great prophets, and minor prophets in the Old Testament, and they were good men, but they all needed somebody along the way, and Jesus said, I came that you might have life, I came that you might have it more abundant, he says on this one, you don't need a cosigner, he says because at the period of life, he says I will show you how to take real risks, oh my God, you ain't got to go to Dr. Phil, you ain't got to talk to Oprah, you ain't got to talk to Yolanda Bezak, he says I'll show you how to get real rest, and I ain't just talking about eight hours of sleep, but I'll give you rest, that even when your enemies around you, you still got peace, I'll give you peace, that's a past all understanding, you ain't got to worry about what's going on, because I promise, I'll be right there, he says, I'll show you how to take real rest, that's what he tells you, in his promise, I like this. I like this. I'm going to show y'all something. Show y'all something. Try to teach y'all something. Say, try to teach us. Try to teach us. Here is a teachable moment. Okay. I like this part because Jesus says, is everybody may not have um, cognitive sense, which means everybody probably can't read it. There are some people that can read it but just don't fully understand it. And there are some people who says, I'm a hands-on person. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. I'm a hands-on person. Jesus says, this is for all of us who needs the hands-on. If you don't get that, I'll show you real rest. Jesus said, okay, let me not, let me, let me not. I just talked to the tired people, but I want to let the worn out and burned out people know something too. He says, walk with me. Walk with me. Work with me. Work with me. Oh, 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 y'all missed it. He says, work with me. The problem with a lot of us is we want God to work for us all the time. My Lord. Lord, heal me. Lord, deliver me. Lord, help me. Lord, I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. The problem is what God is saying that if I keep taking you out every time, and keep rescuing you every time. You'll never know how to get out on your own. And what God is trying to tell us, too many of us Christians have gotten to the point where we have become so codependent on him that we don't know how to do anything ourselves. Yeah. 
Show me an example, Pastor. Okay, God tried to show you the example of in, in, in the Garden of Eden. He said, now, now, Adam, I'm going to plant the tree. And I'm going to grow the tree. But you at least got to name the tree. There are a lot of us who want God to do everything for us. We want God to, oh Lord, open up the floodgates of heaven. Lord, create a path for me. And God does all these things. You want to say, Lord, now walk for me. No, no, no. The Lord says, I walk with you. And there's so many times we have disciplined, made ourselves disabled because God is saying, I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to show you how to call demons out. You ain't got to go to no suit sale. You ain't got to go to no witches. You ain't got to burn no sage. You ain't got to get no stones in your house. He says, if you walk with me, you can call demons out. He says, walk with me and work with me. Look what he says. I like this. I like this. I like this. I like this. Watch how I do it. Watch how I do it. I never get the other day trying to do something on my phone. Let's see was in California. I faced him and said, let's see. How do I do this? Let's see. So, oh, Lord. I said, see, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Please don't do that. Oh, Lord. He said, Dad, you got the phone? I said, yeah, I'm talking to you. I got the phone. We don't face that. I said, you got the phone? He was looking at his TV. Never looked at the phone because I've deterred him by this time. He's looking not at the screen, but he's looking at his TV. He said, Dad, if you just go to the right corner of your screen, up there at the top, he said, you're going to see these three bars up there. He says, push the button. I wanted, see what I was expecting him to do. I was expecting him to do it. He says, because I've been doing it to you the whole time, that's how you don't know how to do it when I ain't with you. Oh my God, y'all get that. Y'all get that for y'all get that. He said, the reason, because you, I've been doing it so much for you, you don't know how to do it when you give the jam. But if you read the Bible, he showed you how to get out of a storm. If you read the Bible, he told you how to wake up the dead. If you read the Bible, he told you how to open blinded eyes. And in your God, come over these blind eyes. And God says, go to the top of your screen and just push the button and call my name. Is there anybody in the house that can give God praise? Because you're going to start doing some stuff yourself. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. Y'all don't believe y'all self. Y'all don't believe yourself. Dave you said, I can do it. I don't need you to look at your neighbor. I need you to look at yourself. Say, I can do it. Oh, oh, y'all don't believe yourself. Y'all don't believe y'all can do it. Because every time you go to do it, you doubt yourself. God done gave you everything you need. You got all the education. You got all the requirements. But every time you get ready to go somewhere, you keep talking about what you can't do. And the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who's to me. He didn't say some things. He didn't say some a part of things. He said, I can do all things through Christ. Is that anybody going to trust the all of God? That when you trust the all of God, God will trust all of you. Bible. Come on, watch what I do. Look what it says. Learn the unforced rhythm of grace. Y'all, y'all, y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. The unforced rhythm of grace. Which means that grace Look what it says. Faith come by what? Hear. Uh oh. What's the rhythm? A sound. Thank you, Lord. Can I teach y'all for a moment? 
and, and I this 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 ain't me, but 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 Miles Monroe says this. He says, when you understand Satan, you understand the power of Satan, you understand what I'm talking about right here. The Bible says, Satan, y'all think Satan is the prince of the earth. He ain't studying the earth. He ain't studying the earth. Can, can I tell you how, how, how can I tell you he ain't studying the earth? Because he was willing to give Jesus so many cities and nations, he ain't studying the earth. It's worthless to him. The Bible says he is the prince of the air. He's the prince of the air. Uh -huh. When you understand music, rhythm, and sound comes by the air. Yeah. Word comes by the air. And what happens is God says, I've already released some stuff for you yeah. and to you. But because you are listening to other devices and things, you decide to listen to country way more than you decide yeah. And what you're doing is you're blocking out what God is trying to tell you because you listen to so much other stuff in there. And you worried about what somebody else doing down the street when God trying to tell you, I'm trying to deliver you, but you're so focused on stuff in the air. He's the prince of the air. Can I go a bit deeper? Go ahead. Go ahead. When I grew up, I don't care, y'all know I'm about 50 years old. When I grew up, TV used to have the FCC used to let certain things go on TV. You used to let stuff go on TV. And what TV is, it's called uh, media, which means medium. Hope y'all get that. Medium, which means it stand, it's a stand between. It's a stand between. Oh, my God. And what the media has done in their movies, in their music, they've allowed so much vulgarity to come out that we're not, we don't even come, oh, my God. Back when I was growing up, when somebody kissed on TV, my mom would be doing this. Go out in the room. Go look at Sesame Street. Now they doing everything. Matter of fact, a commercial, they twerking for bubblegum these days. And your child sitting there, instead of you telling them to get out of the room, you talking about, let me see if you can do it. Let me see if you can do it. Go on and twerk for me in a diaper. They sitting there three years old in a full of, can't even go take a dump. They can't even go take a dump. They don't even, can't tell you they can pee, but they know every word of the song that's on the radio. They can't say pee, pee, boo, boo, but you sitting there letting them twerk in a loaded diaper. The devil is a lie. You're allowing stuff to deal down down your intelligence. Go get them. Cause that's all they had. 
I would rather see let somebody see me walking in something. Hope y'all get this. That does not fit me. Because I wanted their approval that I got it. Oh my God. How many of us are walking around in a relationship with somebody and they don't even fit your mentality? They don't fit your income. They don't fit your integrity. But guess what? You walking around because they say, oh, you got him and she got you. And God is saying, I ain't put that on you. And there are a lot of us fighting battles and fighting demons that God says, I ain't going to lay them on you. Now, he says, I ain't going to lay them on you, but I ain't going to stop you from laying them on yourself. My Lord. Okay, Jesus. So guess what God is saying? When you come to the altar, it's like, Lord, take this burden from me. Can I tell y'all what God does? God says, I ain't put that on you. When Adam and Eve eat the fruit, uh -huh. the first thing, the first thing Adam said, he said, the woman gave, he said, uh-uh. Uh, she put it there. She put it there. Y'all say it with me. She put it there. You picked the phone cup. You bent your elbow. She didn't stuff it in your mouth. She didn't shove it in your mouth. You won't see there's a lot of people blaming you because it was there. You ate it. How many of us? No, no, I don't preach y'all, I preach us. How many of us eat stuff we know that they agree with us? I, I, I can't talk about me. I got to talk about y'all. Talk about me. I know spicy things, spicy things create acid reflux for me. But because I want something spicy, what I'll do is I'll go take my anti-reflux medicine proud of me eating it. Proud of me eating it. So it said, I'm still going to do it. I'm going to do it anyway. Can I, can I preach now? See, y'all went with me there, so I got to go spiritual. There are a lot of us ask for repentance before we go into the house. There's a lot of us ask for repentance before we pick up the phone. And what y'all say while we, no, no, I ain't gonna say y'all, what we say while we're doing it is, the Lord know my heart. Yeah, he knew your heart, that you was abusing his grace, his, un, his unforceable grace. You was using his grace and say, Lord, you got me while I go and do some sin and, and some hitting and grinning. And you want to talk about the Lord know my heart. Yes, he does know your heart, that you just use the grace of God to cover you in your foolishness. The Bible says there is no way sweet and bitter can come from the same fountain. He said, I won't, I won't, I won't lay the, anything on you heavy or ill-fitted. David went to King Saul about facing the light and Saul says to him put this on I won plenty of battles in this wear my armor because I'm the king they laid mine with more than they would a normal soldier he says put this on and David put on the king's armor with the king royal seal on it and David put it on but David says even though you gave it to me even though you gave me permission I can't wear this because it don't fit me there's a whole lot of us doing stuff that don't fit us we try to squeeze round things into square pegs it just don't fit it don't fit you and you want to walk around and ask me how do I look can I be real with you you don't look all that good because you wear something that don't fit you We 
we're wearing language that don't fit us. We're rolling our eyes that don't fit us. And we say, say the fire, Holy Ghost feel and won't speak to somebody. That don't fit who you say you are. Why he says this. That's what, that's what he does. And then I'm going to finish it. Jesus provides the cross. He provides the cross. This is what he says. Third, he says this. He says this. He says, keep company with me. Keep company with me. Stay in constant communication with me. He said, when you keep coming with me, you'll learn to live freely and lightly. We keep running around hollering about how heavy life is, how tough life is, when he said, but if you just keep coming with me. So what he's saying is, surrender to me. Everybody standing all over the house. Everybody standing all over the house. Today, this 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 ain't no this is not a normal altar call today. And what what I'm, what I'm what I'm challenging all of us is we gotta walk down walk down the aisles of stuff that we're comfortable with. That still we still know ain't Christ like. Today, if you're ready to, to surrender because Jesus recognized where you are, why don't you step out by faith right now? Why don't you step out by faith? If you're ready for the partnership where you can walk with the Lord and He'll walk with you, this, this thing is what, what the Lord is saying, I got you. You, you, you. Make your way, make your way, make your way, make your way. This. If you're tired, worn out, burned out, today, 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 come on, come on, come on, come on. If you're tired, tired, sick and tired of being tired. <laughs> born out, born out. <laughs> You've been crying yourself to sleep. Come on, let's say it. Come on, let's say it with your hands lifted up. Come on. 
hands as far as you can right now. Stretch your hands as far as you can. Me. Say, Lord, Lord here, I am. here I am. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm warm. I'm, warm. I'm wounded. I'm, wounded. I'm, burned out. I'm burned out. Can, can we, can we, Lord? It's me.
Come on and give him a praise. don't know the Lord as your personal Savior. That's the key word, personal Savior. Personal Savior. Today, meet me right here at the altar. If you're ready to reconnect with God and re-surrender to Him, you want a renewed relationship with Him, meet me at this altar right now. If you're ready to make sure well in your home and say, Lord, this is where I believe you want me to be. I got some work I got to do. If that's you right now, meet me right here at this altar right now. If that's you. If that's you. If that's you on Facebook, why don't you go ahead and hit disciple? If you want to give your heart to the Lord, hit disciple. Say, not only that, if you want to reconnect, I tell you to hit reconnect. This is your moment. This is your time for you to do just that. God is so good. Come on and give God a praise right now. Come on, come on, give God a praise right now. Prepare your hearts and minds. Prepare your hearts and minds for communion. Y'all go ahead and keep going, keep going. Prepare your hearts and minds for communion. We invite you at home, we invite you at home to grab some water, grab some juice, some crackers, or bread, and join us in communion. We give it. Sacrifice for humanity. Sacrifice for humanity. The Bible said he lifted up, gave thanks, and he drank it. This is the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Take it and drink it. The 
the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. this service today. I challenge you today to share this message with three, four people today. I challenge you to share it, go back, look at it, that it will be a blessing unto your soul. Amen. We speak it right now. Amen. We speak it right now. Amen. Also, too, we are going to have uh, the meet women are going to meet with Sister Sonia, Minister Sonia Lyons, right now at the church as well. Um, I ask all of you all to pray much for, pray much for um, Minister Bass and her family who uh, laid her um, son to rest, grandson yesterday to rest on um, yesterday, as well as we ask you to pray for Sister Trina and Pedro's family as well. They laid their uncle to rest. Uh, if there's anybody else who I may not know, to rest on yesterday. We ask you all to pray much uh, for them. Also, too, Sister Glenda uh, lost her mother-in-law, uh, so we ask you all to pray much for her as well. Amen. Amen. So, with all those things, amen. Uh, y'all, my son home today. Amen. Come on. Amen. 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 Come up and just stand up, please. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> We thank God for being at home next Saturday. Next Saturday, you will be graduating from Tuskegee University. Amen. Also, too, also too, he is now now has officially moved to San Jose, California. Amen. Where he is, that's right, uh, San Jose, California, where he is already working for Tesla out there. So we thank God for him. We thank God for him. I thank God. For that, and I want everybody to know something. I, I thank God for the wonderful grace that God is showing us. I want y'all to see this. We see that a young man from Thomas and Georgia, a young man from Thomas and Georgia, was drafted number one. Amen. Come on, come on. We congratulate uh, Brother Trayvon and his family. We thank God for them, and we pray that God continue to bless them for years and years and generations to come. Well, God is showing us this, our young folks, that if you can get a draft pick of number one with all the colleges and football, you know how many people play football? To be drafted number one in the first round overall, that is a true blessing, amen. Uh, have this graduation season, and what we see, we're seeing more and more of, of individuals who look like us who are walking across those stages. And so what I'm saying to all of you all right now, everybody's not going to play professional for it. Everybody made sports. Everybody made it all go out to college. But find, my granddaddy told me this, get something in your head or in your hands. Can't nobody take that. They can take houses. They can take cars. They can take friends. They can take a whole lot of things. But can nobody take when you have intellect and when you have a trade or a skill. And what I'm pushing my young folks to do, just saying I'm just going to do is not enough. The Bible just told us how we can live a life freely and lightly. It feels good to be able to pay your bills on time. Parents, we got to push our children. My mom and dad told me, we ain't friends. Y'all ain't got to eat mad. My parents told us, we ain't friends. I ain't going to be your friend. And when I tried to close the door in my house, my daddy took, the, took it off the hinge. Because he said, you don't own nothing around here. He did not make home comfortable enough for me that I would stay in there waiting for them to die. Come on now. Come on now. 
Jesus just told us in this text, learn from me, work with me. If the Lord say work with me, then we need to teach our children, spouses, if they grow and got all the abilities, they need to go to work. Ain't but 10 people say that. Ain't but 10 people say that. Go to work. Amen. Amen. Well, all hearts and minds are clear. Amen. Again, we ask you all to pray much for us. As we travel to Tuskegee, we pray much for us. Amen. Even as um, so, y'all, y'all, let me do this. Can I come here? I'm gonna pray for my son. I need my ministers to come on around. Come on around, pray for my son. Y'all stretch out your hands. Amen. As he travels, as he travels, as he travels, as he travels. Amen. <laughs> stretching your hands out in this direction. Most gracious God. Although I may be his pastor or his dad. So, pastor part knows you got him covered. But the father part says keep him covered. God, I ask you right now, God, to shield and protect not only my son, but those who look like him. God, I ask you that you reach out and touch every African-American male or males across gender and even ethnicity. Wake up this generation, God. God, and speak to their hearts and let them know that they are kings and princes and not prisoners or slaves to the system. God, I ask you right now that you shall break some yokes right now. And that our men will stand proud and understand that they shall be great men and great fathers. I speak that they shall teach their children how to be great men and great fathers and great husbands. Speak it right now in the name of Jesus that every young man that seems that they may be lost, God, give them direction right now. God, I ask you to do it right now. And I speak long life that he shall see his children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren and great-great-grandchildren. That he shall see generations of children that shall come from him and the family. And every family is above and beyond. God, I speak that our lives shall stop, be cut, stop getting cut off too short. That we shall see the fruits of our labor. In Jesus' name, and I plead the blood of Jesus upon his life, upon his heart, that no weapon formed against him shall prosper. I speak that the doors of promotion and the floodgates shall begin to open like never did before on his life and lives to come. In Jesus' name, we do pray. And every heart said, Amen. 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 Come on and give God a hand of praise. Come on, give God a hand of praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Everyone standing all over the house. Everyone, everyone standing all up. Hey, man. How you doing? He coming up here too. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We thank God for all of you on today. We pray that something was said that touched your heart. That you made up in your mind that you won't leave this place the way that you came in Jesus' name. Most gracious God, as we leave this place, we're reminded in this word, excuse me, not to leave your presence. Lord, help us to walk with you and keep company with you. Lord, help us to look and learn from you. That God, people will see you in us. So now, God, help us to make today even better. In Jesus' name. Now bless this child. Do it for him right now. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. God, we love you. Tell somebody you love them. Amen. Amen. That's what I'm talking about right now.
Amen. God bless you. We love you. Have a blessed day. Ladies, come see Mr. Lions. Come see Mr. Lions. <laughs>